Hello everyone, welcome to this tutorial on line graph. I am Ad Fataya and today we are diving into the exciting world of advanced agent workflows and multi-agent systems. If you have been working with Langchain and want to take your AI applications to the next level, you are in the right place. LangGraph is an extension of LangChain that opens up a whole new world of possibilities for creating complex dynamic AI workflows. In this tutorial, we will explore the key concept of LangGraph, understand its architecture, and even walk you through a simple agent application to get you started. Whether you are building chatbots, automated reasoning system, or any AI application that require complex decision making, LangGraph gets you covered. So, without any further delay, let's get started. All right, let's start with the basics. What is exactly LangGraph? LangGraph is like the cool older sibling of LangChain. It is specifically designed for creating highly customizable agents and multi-agent workflows. When you are building complex workflows, where agents perform a series of actions based on dynamic inputs and situation changing, LangGraph is your go-to tool. Now let's break down the core components of line graph by looking at this simple diagram. Think of graphs as the backbone of your workflow. They represent the overall structure of what your AI agent is going to do. Nodes are the building blocks of your graph. Each node represents a specific task or action that your agent needs to perform. Nodes can be either agents themselves or functions. Edges connect your nodes showing how your workflow moves from one task to another. And there are two types of edges, normal edges and conditional edges. Normal edges are straightforward connections where one task always leads to another. Conditional edges are smart connections that use a function to decide which task to do next. Finally, we have entry and exit points. Every graph has a starting point where your workflow begins and an end point where it finishes. Now let's talk about the brain of our line graph, the state machine. The state machine in line graph is like a super smart traffic controller. It keeps track of where we are now in our workflow, what happened so far, and what needs to happen next. Here's what you need to know. It manages state transitions, making sure tasks are executed in the right order. The agent state can be accessed at all parts of the graph, at each node and on each edge. This state is local to the graph, meaning it's specific to this particular workflow. You can store this state in a persistent layer, allowing you to pause and resume your workflow at any point. This state management is crucial because it allows your AI to maintain context through complex multi-step processes. It's like giving your AI a memory that persists across different tasks and decisions. All right, let's level up our graph game and talk about cyclic graphs. In line graph, cyclic graphs are like putting your workflow on repeat. They allow us to create paths that can loop back on themselves. This can be very useful when you need to repeat a task until a certain condition is met, or implement interactive processes that go back and forth, or when you need to create a workflows that can refine their outputs through multiple iterations. Now let's talk about one of my favorite features in line graph, the human in the loop. As amazing as our AI agents are, sometimes they need a human touch. Human in the loop is a way to implement a human intervention in our automated AI workflows. It allows for a human oversight of critical decision. A human can also handle exceptions that the AI tool might not be equipped to deal with. This will significantly improve the accuracy and reliability of our system. Imagine creating a customer service bot. 
For most queries, the bot will handle everything automatically. But for complex issues and high value customers, the system will seamlessly hand off to a human operator. And that's the power of a human in the loop. Alright, now let's talk about persistent inline graph. Persistent inline graph is like giving your AI workflow a save button. It allows you to save the state of the workflow at any point. This is very useful for long-running processes that might need hours or days to complete, and for cash recovery so that you don't lose progress if something goes wrong, and it will also maintain continuity over multiple sessions. Alright, now let's zoom out a bit and talk about a broader concept, flow engineering. Flow engineering is a hot topic in the AI community right now. It's all about breaking down complex tasks into a series of steps or flows. It goes beyond simple prompt engineering for creating more robust AI systems, and it allows for intermediate check and balances, improving the overall reliability of your AI system. With flow engineering, you can create an interactive process that can refine and improve results over multiple steps. LineGraph is a perfect tool for implementing flow engineering concepts. It allows you to create these step-by-step -step workflows with each node in your graph representing a distinct step in your workflow. Alright, let's create a simple chatbot using LineGraph. We will go through the code step by step. First, we need to install the necessary packages. This command install or upgrade OpenAI, LangChain, and LangGraph libraries. Next, we will set up our environment and load our OpenAI API key. This code loads our API key from our .env file and confirm if it's loaded successfully. Now, let's import the necessary component from LangGraph and LangChain. First, we will import static graph from linegraph.graph. This is the core component we will use to build our chatbot's workflow. It allows us to define a graph structure that represents the flow of our chatbot operations. Then, we will import annotated from typing. This is a utility for adding context to type hints. We will use it to provide additional information about our state structure. Then, we will import type dict from typing extensions. This allows us to create a dictionary with a fixed set of keys, each with a predefined type. It helps in defining a clear structure of our state. Then we will import add messages from linegraph.graph.message. This is a utility function that helps in adding new messages to our state in a standardized way. And finally, we will import chat OpenAI from Langchain underscore OpenAI. This is the interface to OpenAI's chat model. We will use it to generate responses in our chatbot. These imports provide us with the building blocks we need to create a structured type safe chatbot using LangGraph and LangChain. Now we will define the structure of our state. This might look simple, but it's a powerful definition. We are creating a new class called state that inherits from type dict. This means that state will be a dictionary with predefined keys and value types. We define one key in this dictionary, which is messages. Its value is annotated as list, but not just any list. The annotated type hint tells LangGraph that this list should be handled by the add messages function when new messages are added. This structure ensures that our state always has a messages key containing a list, and that the new messages are added in a consistent way throughout our graph. It's a small but crucial step in maintaining the integrity of our chatbot conversation history. Now we will create our graph builder. This line is where we start constructing our chatbot's workflow. We are creating a new state graph object and assigning it to graph builder. We pass our state class to state graph. This tells line graph what structure to expect for the state that will be passed around in our graph. The graph builder object will now let us add nodes, which represent operations, and edges which represent the flow between operations, to construct our chatbot logic. This graph builder is like a blank canvas where we will paint our chatbot's behavior. It knows what our state looks like, and it's ready for us to start adding the component for our chatbot. Let's run the code cell now. 
Now we will set up our language model. This initializes a chat OpenAI instance using the GPT-4O mini model, with a moderate temperature for some creativity and responses. Next we are going to define the chatbot function. This function is the heart of our chatbot. It takes a state parameter of type state. This is the current state of our conversation. Inside the function, we use our language model to generate a response. We pass in the current messages from the state. The invoke method sends these messages to the OpenAI API and gets a response. We return a new state with the AI's responses added to the messages. This function encapsulates the core logic of our chatbot, taking the current conversation state, generating a response, and updating the state with that response. It is a simple yet powerful representation of a conversational term. Let's run the code cell now. Now let's add our chatbot node to the graph and set it as both the entry and exit point. Here's where we define the structure of our graph. We add a single node called chatbot to our graph. This node is associated with our chatbot function. We set this chatbot node as both the entry point and the finish point of our graph. This simple structure means that for every interaction, we start at the chatbot node, we run the chatbot function, and finally we end at the chatbot node. This creates a loop where each user input goes through the same process. In more complex chatbots, you might have multiple nodes for different stages of processing or decision making. Now let's compile the graph. This line takes all the nodes and connections we have defined and turns them into an executable graph. The compile method finalizes our graph structures. It checks for any inconsistencies or errors in our graph definition. It optimizes the graph for execution and it returns a compiled graph object that can we actually run. This compiled graph is what we will use to process user inputs and generate responses. It's the final ready to use version of our chatbot's logic structure. Let's run the code cell now. Let's display a visual representation of our graph. This code attempts to create a visual representation of our graph. It tries to import image and display from IPython. These are typically available in Jupyter Notebooks. It uses the draw mermaid PNG method to generate a PNG image of our graph structure. If successful, it displays the image, giving us a visual representation of our chatbot's workflow. If it fails, example if you are not in a Jupyter environment, it prints an error message. Visualizing the graph can be incredibly helpful, especially for complex chatbots. It allows us to see the flow of our chatbot logic at a glance, which can be valuable for debugging and explaining the chatbot structure to others. Let's run the code cell now, and here's our graph. This diagram illustrates the simple yet effective structure we have created. At the top we see an oval labeled start. This represents the entry point of our graph. It's where the process began each time a user interacts with our chatbot. Moving down we come to a rectangular box labeled chatbot. This is the heart of our system. It represents the node we created that contains our chatbot function. This is where all the magic happens, where we process the user input, generate a response using our language model, and update the conversation state. Finally, at the bottom, we have another over label end. This signifies the end of our graph process flow. The arrows connecting this element show the flow of our chatbot operation from start to chatbot, then from chatbot to end. Now let's see our chatbot in action with a quick example. We start by creating an input dictionary. It contains a single message asking what is Langshan. This simulates a user's first interaction with our chatbot. We then use graph.stream method passing in our input. This method yields outputs as they are generated, allowing us to process them in real time. We use a simple for loop to iterate over these outputs and print each one. This will show us the chatbot's response to our question. Let's run the code cell now. And we get the answer. Now let's create our simple chatbot application. This code creates an interactive loop for our chatbot. We start an infinite loop that continuously prompt for user input. If the user types quit, exit, buy or queue, the loop breaks and the chatbot says goodbye. For any other input, we feed it into our graph using the stream method. 
We then iterate over the response, extracting the assistant message and printing it. The dashed lines serve as a visual separator between interaction. This loop transforms our chatbot from one-time query responder to an interactive conversational agent. It showcases how easily we can create dynamic responsive AI assistant using LineGraph. Let's run the code cell now. For user input, let's type what is LangChain. And we get the response. And if we type now quit, it ends. So this is how easy it is to create an AI assistant using LangGraph. And there you have it. We have taken a tour of LangGraph and its key features. LangGraph opened up a whole new world of possibilities for creating complex dynamic AI workflows. I hope this tutorial has gotten you excited about the possibilities of LangGraph. In a future video, we are going to dive into more complex AI agent examples to show you how to implement this feature in practice. If you enjoyed this tutorial, don't forget to hit the like button, subscribe to my channel, and ring the notification bell for more AI development content. And drop a comment below if there is any specific feature in LangGraph you want me to cover in a future video. Until next time, happy coding!